and welcome everybody to another fun session of hands-on practice with Packet Tracer, focusing on the topics in the CCNA from Cisco Systems. Boy, I've had a, a fantastic whirlwind of things that have been happening. You're probably busy too, so let's get right down to business. The focus of this hands-on lab is to have some practice in troubleshooting, which is always incorporated in my labs to make us sure we're on top of our toes, and also implement some fault tolerance with HSRP. It's a first top redundancy protocol. So let me share with you where you can download the lab. I'm going to be using Packet Tracer version 7.3, so you'd want to have that version or higher. Let me show you where you can download the, download the lab, give you the tasks, and we'll go right to it. Let's take a look. All right, so here is a really uh, simple site, thekeithbarker.com. And what you do is you just go there, uh, thekeithbarker.com, and click on Downloads here, or you can scroll down to Downloads. And the lab we are going to do today all right, all right, all right. The lab we are going to do today is this bad boy right here. And again, thanks for the feedback on renaming, <laughs> putting better names on these labs so you can see the labs and see kind of what they do. So first top redundancy protocols, HSRP lab 2020-419. Ask for my own sanity keeping. And then just click on this link here, download it, and we'll be in business. So let's do that. We'll download it by clicking on that arrow. I'm going to say save it. That's going to put it in my downloads folder. We'll go to my downloads folder, which is right here, and I'll just extract it, right click. And the reason I'm doing this is I just want to make sure that I have the same exact file you do. So when you're walking through this, you'll have similar experiences because the, the starting point will be the same. So we'll extract it, and there it is. There's the PDF. And I've also, which came up on another screen, burp, burp, right there it is. And I've also put in um, the instructions in the lab itself. So I'm going to open up Packet Tracer this lab that we just downloaded. I've already logged on, so it's not going to ask me to log on again. And let me size this up. And let me move my head out of the way while I size this up. Give me one moment. All right, that looks pretty, that looks pretty good. All right, so this is the tasks at hand. These are the tasks at hand. And I had some, some great feedback from a lot of people about making these labs uh, an opportunity for having them more challenging based on your current level of experience. So if you're just starting in the world of Cisco and CCNA, please enjoy the playlist, get a good book, you know, set up some study habits. And the master playlist is there to help reinforce a lot of those skills. And if you see something in this lab like, whoa, what's that or how'd that work? Um, just give yourself a big, huge margin, a big, huge cushion, and realize that if you haven't learned something yet, you can learn that tomorrow or the next day. Just keep on learning, keep on growing. Okay, so Packet Tracer and FHRP Fun and a little bit more. So here's the objectives. For, uh, we want to implement fault-tolerant default gateways for DHCP clients PC1 and 2. So that's PC1, there's PC2. Part of the fun here is discovery about where things are exactly. And we have three VLANs. PC1's in VLAN 10, PC2's in VLAN 20, this DHCP server is in VLAN 30, and that's really all the instructions it gives us. Here's the web server right there. So when clients go to thekeithbarker.com in Packet Tracer, they're going to be going to this web server, so you know where that is. The multi-layer switches are doing the routing between VLANs 1, uh, 10, 20, and 30. And the goal is to have these DHCP clients have uh, fault tolerant default gateways, which is what FHRP does, and you can test it by using a browser from either either PC to the thekeithbarker.com. So I imagine it would go something like this: we would get it all working, and then we would power down one of the multi-layer switches, just turn it off, and then take a look and verify whether or not the other multi-layer switch with its fault tolerance with HSRP carries the traffic and allows it to work. So. Let's do that. <laughs> now, a, a couple things I do want to give you a heads up on is that there are there are a few challenges in this lab. It's not all just, I'm going to implement the three commands for HSRP. It's just going to fly. It's also going to take a little bit of digging in, identifying what's going on, what works, what doesn't work. And so here's what I'd like you to do. If, if you're at a fairly advanced level in CCNA or above CCNA and you want to try this lab out, I would encourage you to not use the starting topology, just build this complete topology from scratch and assign all the ports and all the trunks and it'll give you all that practice, it's great. If you're brand new or just learning CCNA, start with this framework and then just take it piece by piece. So the spoiler alert is that as I go through this right now, 
if you want to do it on your own first, um, <laughs> if, if it's the live debut of the premiere of this video, please hang around and we'll have a chat afterwards on the Discord server. But if you're watching this at a later date, after, what's the date today? The uh, 19th. If you're watching this a recorded version of this, just pause it right here and work on the lab. And then if you need help or you want to compare how you did it to how I did it, then you can go ahead and resume it and play. The goal is hands-on practice, hands-on practice to get better and better. And I'm still pleasantly surprised and happy about the idea that I learn new things all the time. I'm a double CCIE and I will revisit things and I think, wow, look at that. See it from a different angle. So the more you practice, the better you will get at these technologies. Okay, so um, fault tolerant default gateway lays. I would say we should start by if this PC right here is supposed to be <laughs> is supposed to be able to hit the web server uh, before we implement the fault tolerance. Let's make sure the network is working. That's a good start. So we'll go to this PC, and on this PC it looks like it's powered on. That's great. Let's go to a browser and a desktop tab. And we'll click on web browser and let's just give it a shot. The Keith Barker. <laughs> I, should be able, I should be able to spell that one correctly. TheKeithBarker.com. No host name unresolved. Well, that's very kind of Packet Tracer to tell us that DNS isn't working. It can't resolve the name. Let's, um, all right, well, let's take a look at the details for this client and see what's going on. So on the client, we'll go to a, not a terminal, we'll close that. Go to the command prompt. And right here, we'll do an IP config forward slash all. And well, there, there's your problem right there. Fast Ethernet. <laughs> it doesn't have an IP address. No, no wonder uh, it couldn't resolve anything. It can't get anywhere. So let's take a look at it. It's supposed to be a DHCP client. So let's go take a look at its configuration. So under config, Fast Ethernet, oh, static and no address. So we'll click on DHCP. And that will do the discover offer request acknowledgement process, assuming we f And it comes up with a 169.254 address. That re that refers to the fact that it tried DHCP, did a discover, and just didn't get a response, didn't get an offer. And that's an automatic private IP address assignment of 169. It's bad news. It's, it means the client was trying to get an IP address, didn't work out. So let's, let's resolve that. Um, can't get an IP address. Let's start at the server. In this topology, this is the DHCP server for the network. Let's just make sure DHCP server is running. Uh, let's just, you know, step by step. So it has an IP address. I'm looking here at the 10.30.05. Its default gateway is 10.30.01. And the DNS server, okay, so let's just verify that on that server that DNS, uh, DHCP services are running. That's a good start. So we'll, we've already looked at the IP address. So we'll go to services and DHCP. And it has three pools, has pool 10 for the 1010 network, has pool 20 for the 1020 network with a default gateway of dot 11 and then a DNS server. All right, let me just make sure, <laughs> let me take a look at the, um, let me take a look, let's look at, let's look at the multi-layer switches and see what their addresses are. I'm just hovering over them. You could also go in and issue IP interface brief, that would work. So multi-layer switch one has the addresses of dot 11 for all three interfaces, VLAN 10, 20, 30. And if we hover over MLS2, multi-layer switch two, it's got 22. All right, so none of them have the dot one address. So on the DHCP server itself, <laughs> we need to fix the, D the uh, default gateway problem. Cause see that? It says the default gateway is 10, 30, 0, 1. And uh, I got bad news for you. Nobody has that IP address of 10, 30, 0, 1 that I see. So let's go ahead and fix that. We'll point him to one of the servers as a default gateway. So we'll go back to config and fast ethernet. The IP address looks good, 10.30.05. And we'll go to settings and we'll specify the default gateway is 11. It's gonna be important if we wanna get off the local subnet, we need to have a default gateway that's reachable. So now let's test that. Let's go back to desktop and let's do an IP config slash all. Sometimes it's also good just to verify that what you think you put in is actually showing up. So 10.30.05, good. And the default gateway is .11. Let's verify we can ping that. 10.0.30.11. Oh, <laughs> dyslexics of the world, untie! <laughs> I put the IP address in backwards. Uh, it's 10.30.0.11. All right, and then we have a ping. So we can reach our default gateway, that's fantastic. Uh, now let's go back up to our, and we verified that the server has DHCP pools 
and it has a default gateway. Let's go back to the PC and let's bounce it. So I'm just going to bounce the interface by going to the PC, click on Fast Ethernet under interface, clicking Static, which is basically, okay, static address. <laughs> and on, on Packet Tracer, you don't have to click Apply. It just does it. And then we'll click on DHCP again, and we'll look at the box here. Hey, it's got an IP address. Great. That's a really good start. So we'll go back to Desktop and just verify with a show. <laughs> Too much Cisco. Um, IP config forward slash all. And there's its IP address. Uh, 53, default gateway 10.10.0.11. And we verified that. Let me just hover over multi-layer switch one. It's got the 10.10.0.11 address. Good. So um, let's give it another shot. Let's go ahead back to, we'll close that view and go to browser. And the browser, let's go to the Keith barker.com just just to get a baseline that we have basic functionality before we put in fault tolerance you got to walk before you can run and uh why isn't that working all right well let's let's get this working and then we'll we'll proceed to get the hsrp uh, assuming we still have time <laughs> no we'll have time um let's see here um let's trace let's go to back to the pc and let's do a trace to that server. What is the server's address? Let me just check the server's address. I'm hovering over the web server. Its address is 23.1.2.2. Okay, so let's do a trace from PC to ping, or trace. T-R-A-C-E-R-T -E -E is how you do it on Windows. They've emulated that here. 23.1.2.2. And survey says, We have a default gateway, don't we? Hold on a second. IP config. So we have a default gateway, 10.10.0.11. We can ping our default gateway, but we do a trace, it's not responding back. I would expect to see at least the first top of 10.10.0.11. All right, I can live with that. Um, let's go take a look at the multi-layer switch and see what its attitude on life is. It has a power supply, that's a good thing. The LEDs are up, that means it's running. That's fantastic. And we'll go to CLI for multi-layer switch one. Let me spread that out a little bit. And let's have a chat with it. Hey, show IP interface brief. So it's got the 10.10.0.11. I wonder if it has routing. Let's do a show IP route. Ah, oh, okay, well. So can't tell you how many times I've done this in Packet Tracer. On this multi-layer switch, which I think is like a 3560 or a, yeah, um, something similar to that. Well, we can just show over. <laughs> yeah, it's a, 30, a 3650, excuse me. So uh, on this 3650, its IP routing is not enabled by default. So it can have VLAN interfaces all day long, all day long, all day and all night, but it's not gonna route for other people unless we do this, config T, IP routing. All right, and I imagine that same thing is over here on MLS2. So I'm just going to do that right now before I forget. Config T, IP, routing. All right, then we'll go back to the original switch. Also, this scenario could be that, hey, somebody was building the network and they didn't quite finish, and they've asked you to pick up the pieces. So that looks like what we're doing here is they didn't quite finish building the network to make it fully functional. Curse them, whoever did that. And let's do a show IP route. So the show IP route here, now it shows all the routing codes and the routing table. That implies that IP routing is enabled. Before it just said default gateway, gateway of last resort isn't you know set. And now I have routes. Uh, but we only have directly connected routes, CDCs. Uh, so if this router got a packet, if this multi-layer switch as a router got a packet to 23 something, there's no default route. There's no directly connected route. It's just gonna drop it. It's not gonna know how to forward a packet. So, Let's just peek over at switch two for a minute. Oh, it yeah, has nothing either. So let's do uh, show, show IP protocols. We'll show you. Show uh, okay. So show IP protocols is going to show us IPv4 routing protocols, and there aren't any. There's no dynamic routing protocols running on this switch, and I'd imagine also on multi-layer switch one. And let's take a look at our one. 
because if you don't have routes or default routes, you can't forward packets at layer three. It's just not going to happen. Show IP route. Yep. So no, um, absolutely no dynamic routing. Well, let's do the show IP protocols. Yeah. So if there were any routing protocols like RIP or OSPF or EIGRP, they'd show up here. Then we could take a closer look. But there's no routing protocols. So I'm going to um, I'm going to fix that with Notepad. <laughs> all right. Uh, these all need routing protocols. So if you want to do RIP, friends don't let friends run RIP, or EIGRP or uh, OSPF. OSPF is the one we need to worry about for CCNA. So config T, router, and make a, the font a little bit bigger. Let's go for, there we go. Okay, router, OSPF1, network. Join me for our videos on wildcard bits and wildcard masks and network statements for that one. And we're just going to dump every IP address, every interface that has an IP address into OSPF, area zero. All right, and WR is a shortcut for copy run start going back a few years. All right, so copy that. Let's go to MLS1 and paste that in. And we'll go to MLS2, paste that in. And it happened so fast. And then router1, paste it in. And what we should have is just show IP uh, OSPF neighbors. All right, we caught them on the way up. So with OSPF, assuming they're going to go all the way to full state, they go from down. That's before it'll start the two init and then two a, and after two a they go to uh, it elf uh, x start and then exchange and then loading in full, and I have faith they're going to come up. So we're going to have neighborships. Also on these ports right here, MLS one and MLS two on those two ports uh, that go down to R one. I did a no switch port, which makes those layer three interfaces just like a routed interface, so you don't have to play with the VLANs for the connectivity between R one and MLS one and MLS two. All right, I saw in the background a neighbor statement come up, so there it is. All right, so now show IP route. So all our networks are here, the 10, the 1010, the 1020, the 1030, and also the 23.1.2 network, great. So all our routes are here. Let's make sure MLS1 has them as well. Show IP route. Yep. Uh, so there's the 2312 network. Okay, so now we have a route. That's helpful. Let's go back to the PC and see whether or not this guy can actually get there. Wow. Okay, so maybe it's doing DNS resolution. Oh, that's probably what it is. It has a, has a DNS server configured. And I think it's trying to do reverse lookups for each hop. So <laughs> it may take a minute. So the first hop is 10.10.011. That's its default gateway. Then 10.11.01, which is router one. And then a timeout. I'm not too concerned with that. There could be firewall in the production environment. There could be firewalls and other devices that don't allow that ICMP messaging going back to the host. That's all right. Let's do a ping to 23.1.2.2. Okay, so I am worried about this. All right, so uh, it's tough to get to the server, the web server, by name if you can't get there by IP address. <laughs> and now, because we're ruling out DNS, and so why can't we get there? Let's go to the multi-layer switch, and let's see if it can ping it. 23.1.2.2. Oh, it can't either. Let's go down to the router, see if it can be a <laughs> show CDP. Uh, okay, it's not a CDP device, so do a ping. 23.1.2.2. All right. Hey, good news. Somebody can ping it. Um, wow. So what? what is the deal? So everybody has routes. The multi-layer switch has routes. Router 1 has routes. They all know about the 23.1.2 network and the 10.30 and everything else. Why? Let's go take a look at this, this guy. So this is the web server itself. And let's just go to a command prompt. IP config slash all and just ask him what the heck is wrong with you? Please tell me. And it says my address is 2312. Oh, okay. Well, that should. Mm. So he says his address is 2312.2. Oh, he doesn't have a default gateway. All right. Well, there you go. So the mask is wonky, but it wouldn't matter because the mask of 255.000, it's, it would still try to respond back to the PC on the 10 network using its default gateway because the first octet's different. But uh, it doesn't have a default gateway. So 
We have a couple options here. I'm going to choose the one that's fastest. We could do NAT. We could tell R1, please NAT everything and make it look local as it goes through. Or we could just put a default gateway on the server. Let's do that. So at the server, and you might be thinking, Keith, like, like what's off limits here? Nothing. It's just a network, like a network is a network. So there's things that go wrong with networks through misconfigs or failure to config. And the troubleshooting is you practice it, you'll get better and better and better doing it. So we'll go to the config of this server, go to fast ethernet. I'm going to correct the mask problem because it really is a 24 bit network. I'm saving my problem, saving other issues for later, saving problems from popping up later. And we'll click under global settings and the default gateway should be, uh, it'll be it's going to be R1's address. I'm going to hover over R1 here. Oh, uh, my hover is broken. I, okay, that's fine. Show IP interface <laughs> brief. All right, so its address is 23.1.2.1. So we'll put that as the default gateway for that server so he can reply back to any networks that he's not directly connected to using R1. So back to R1, default gateway is going to be 23.1.2.1. All right, now let's go to the PC. <laughs> try the ping. Yay, got a reply. All right, let's try DNS. We're right here at the command line. Might as well just do, we can do a ping to the Keith Barker.com. That works. Or we could also use NS lookup. That works great too. Great. Hey, let's open. <laughs> hey, Keith. Wasn't this lab about doing fault tolerance? Yes, it is. But you got to have, a, you can't build and fix and enhance what's already broken. You got to make sure the basic fundamental pieces work first before you start adding on the fault tolerance. That's what we're doing here. All right, so uh, let's go to the PC and let's do uh, open a browser. And uh, we're having fun now. The KeithBarker.com. All right, and there it is. And this little custom website, uh, Dan, uh, the, the layer one man, gets all the credit for this. He built this for me, and I've been using it over and over. It's so fun. So it's just the, the HTML files sitting on that local packet tracer server for our pseudo internet. Okay, so that works. So we're not going to rest on that little island of happiness for too long because we haven't even got to our task yet of making HSRP implemented and, and hot fault uh, default and, and setting up fault tolerance. So let's go ahead to PC2 and just verify that it has the ability to go to that web server as well. So I'll put my mouse in the right place, the KeithBarker.com. Hostname unresolved. What, 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 what? Uh, oh, oh, config, fast ethernet. Yeah, it doesn't have an IP address. DHCP, we'll look at this field right here. Verify we have an IP address, good. Verify we have a default gateway. Good, 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 good. <laughs> and now we'll go to the desktop and we'll try that again. Yay, okay. All right, basic functionality, DHCP is working, which also implies that we've got um, the DHCP server here is in VLAN 30. So that implies that the switches have uh, DHCP forwarding or IP helper, DHCP relay configured on them as well. Okay, now for HSRP, Let's do the carpenter's rule. Let's uh, measure twice, cut once. So here's our plan. For VLAN, this guy, VLAN 10.10.0, let's use .1 as an HSRP address for VLAN 10. And for 10.20, let's use an HSRP address of .1 there as well. So that will be the new default gateway for clients in VLANs 10 and 20. And um, let's also play a little bit with the priorities for um, um, for HSRP. Let's get this guy for VLAN 10. We'll make him a priority of uh, 101. And we'll make this guy for VLAN 20 a priority of 101. So the default's 100. And then we'll set up preempt. So what that'll do is the one who has the highest priority will take over and be active. So we can have MLS1 be the, be the active router for HSRP for VLAN 10. And we can have MLS2 be the active router for VLAN 20. And that way they're kind of load balancing. Although in uh, fault first hop redundancy protocols, the only one that does true like metered load balancing would be GL gateway load balancing protocol. But you can you can do a sort of load balancing here by having one guide be active for one set of VLANs and another router be active for a different set. So anyway, that's what we're doing. <laughs> um, but the load balancing question, if you get that kind of question, the only true load balancing first hop redundancy protocol is the GLBP, gateway load balancing protocol. And uh, 
HSRP would not be the best answer, although <laughs> it could be argued. Okay, so let's configure that. Let's go to MLS1, and on MLS1, we'll do a config T, and we'll go into interface VLAN 10, and in interface VLAN 10, we'll do standby, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna use group 10, just because of the VLAN, you don't have to do that, but I like to do that one. <laughs> that way I see it, I remember what VLAN's for. And we'll say priority is gonna be 101, just a little better. Standby 10 preempt, so that if there's two dudes out there and one guy has a higher priority, he can take it over and not have to wait for the other one to fail. All right, and let's also do a standby 10 IP, which is gonna be 10.10.0.1. All right. And then while we're here, let's do VLAN 20 for this guy as well. So interface VLAN 20 and standby 20 preempt. I'll put preempt on all of them. And that way, whoever has the highest priority is going to win. And standby, oh, I'm going to get in trouble this way. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to copy, I'm just going to put it in. Standby 20 and what, let's see, what commands have I done? Do show history, separate history buffers for configuration mode and privilege mode. All right, so I did preempt only, <laughs> okay. All right, I don't need to, do a, uh, I'm gonna do a priority here. So standby 20 priority, it's gonna be 101 for this guy. Oh, oh, I'm on switch one, I'm on switch one. Back that off. I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop him to 99. I was thinking in my mind I was on the other switch already. Okay, two VLANs, two switches, one switch at a time. So, uh, standby 20, priority one, and then we need an IP address. Standby 20 IP is going to be 10.20.0.1. And let's just do a do show standby. And uh, let me scroll up my screen a little bit here. Can you see all that? I want to make sure we can see it all. That'll work. Okay, that'll work. All right, so VLAN 10, our priority is 101. VLAN 20, our priority is 99. The IP addresses are set correctly. They are both enabled for preemption. Let's go set it up on uh, router two, MLS two. Also, he should be active, show standby. Uh, let's see here, there's an option. There we go. All right, so, uh, He'll be active here in a moment for both of them until we bring MLS2 up. All right, so back on MLS2, config T, interface VLAN 10. We'll just leave the default priority at 100, standby. And I don't need, I'm gonna do preempt here too. Standby 10, preempt. Standby 10, IP is gonna be 10.10.0.1. And then we'll set the priority higher on the other side. Interface, VLAN 20. I should have this written down, it'd be a lot easier. Um, and it's gonna be standby 20 preempt and standby 20 priority 101 and standby 20 IP 10.20.0.1. All right, I think I got it all. There we go, he went active for VLAN 20, that's good. So uh, for interface VLAN 20, show standby brief. Okay, awesome possum. So basically a VLAN 10 and VLAN 20, there's the groups respectively, there's the priority on this guy for VLAN 20 is higher and uh, we are active. And we don't know who the standby is yet, but that will change in a few moments as we, yeah, there we go. So it just took a few moments for those hello messages to go back and forth. All right, now what we need to do is we need to train our clients that their DHCP, their default gateway is going to be dot one, the standby addresses. So we're gonna to go to the DHCP server and on the DHCP server, we'll uh, go to uh, services and DHCP and we'll grab pool 10 and we'll say your default gateway is now gonna be one and click on save. We'll go to VLAN 20 and say your default gateway is gonna be one and click on save. We'll verify that visually right here to make sure that's correct. Then we'll bounce these clients. So I say bounce the clients. I'm gonna go to the clients and just refresh their information by going to uh, config, fast ethernet and take it off static and back to DHCP. Fantastic. 
that should get the new default gateway, which it did. We'll do the same thing for PC2. Click on Config and Fast Ethernet. Can you see me concentrating? Oh, <laughs> time's running short. Uh, okay, and then it's going to verify it got the correct default gateway of dot one. Okay, great, 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 great. I just want to verify both PCs can get to the web server again before we start turning off systems. Also, I should save our configs. Oh my gosh. I'm going to save MLS1. I'm going to save MLS2. I'm going to save the router because uh, if we. <laughs> just to make sure that uh, any changes we made are not going to be lost. All right, so PC1. Let's open up a browser. Go to desktop and browser. I think it's right here. And go to the keithbarker.com. All right, good. Happy to see that. Go to PC2. Just making sure. Go to desktop. Go to browser. The... Oh, come on here. All right, that works too. Great. I'll close that. All right, so now, um, oh, you know, we should do one more thing. This isn't re really required, but if MLS1 is going to be the active router for VLAN 10 and MLS2 is going to be the active router for VLAN 20, we might want to have them also be the roots for their respective spanning trees to make the layer 2 also follow the right direction. Not, You don't have to do that, but... I'm going to because I want him. Uh, I think it'd be okay. So check it, check out our spanning tree videos for all that content about how spanning tree works and how to modify it. So in this case, we'll just do spanning tree VLAN 10 root primary. Come on, Keith. Primary, there we go. That's going to become the root. Da, 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 just like that. And MLS2, config T, spanning tree VLAN 20 root primary. And I may or may not have turned on uh, show spanning tree. So, oh, we are running rapid spanning tree, and we may or may not be running port fast, but that's going to be okay. All right, so let's do this. We just verified that PC1 and PC2 could successfully uh, get to the server, and we've saved our configs on MLS1 and MLS2. Oh, actually, I just, just didn't save my configs. Okay, and am now. So, saving the configs. All right, and now to test this, let's just turn off MLS1. And the, the fastest way for me to turn off that gear right here on this multi-layer switch is to click on it, go to physical. Let's get physical, physical. I'm going to take this power supply <laughs> and drop it out of it. All right, it's done. It is no longer happy, happy. So it was, a few moments ago, it was the active router for uh, HSRP. And if we look at MLS2, look at that. It just went active for that VLAN because it said, hey, my, my buddy's gone. He's dead. And it took over. So it should be handling that virtual IP address along with the MAC address associated with it. Let's go to PC1. And that's cached information. So let's go back and uh, open a new browser and go to the KeithBarker.com. And this is the part where I think, oh, please, just work. Just work. Oh, it did. All right. I'll take it. And um, great. OK. And let's also verify PC2 has the same success. And that works. All right, so now for the real test, let's go ahead and bring this guy back up. So I save the configs on him. I'll drop in a power supply, clunk, and he is booting up. That may take a few seconds. We got time. It'd be good to test it. All right, so as this is, as this is coming up, uh, MLS2 is coming up. It's got to boot. And oh, you know what? Hey, Trevor! Trevor! <laughs> Trevor, just a couple days ago, I love learn, learning new things. He told me about this button right here, which fast forwards time. It looks like 30 seconds to click. There we go. I'm just going to give it a little boost to the future so I don't have to wait for it. Thank you, Trevor. And then I'll just take this guy, the MLS2, and go to um, physical and Drag out the power supply. Oh, that's the that's the one that's, that's the one that's not in there yet. Drag out the existing power supply. It turns off. Now there there is going to be, and I'm going to do a little stall here for like a few seconds because there is going to be an opportunity for a few missed moments of network traffic because uh, OSPF has to converge 
And uh, so if somebody doesn't see a neighbor anymore for OSPF, like, hey, where's my neighbor? I haven't seen you. And the dead timer expires. And I figure he's... so it may take a few moments for routing protocols to converge and figure out a new path as well. Spanning tree, rapid spanning tree is going to be pretty darn quick. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to tell you maybe a few seconds before the network is fully converged again, able to forward traffic. So having said that, and with MLS2 out of the way, let's test. Let's go to PC1. That's cached information. Let's go to a web, web, web browser and uh, the KeithBarker.com. Fast forward a few moments. Okay, okay. <laughs> so it just took a moment for that to connect. All I did was I skipped forward 30 seconds. And let's check PC2 as well. Although I could have just, I'll stay on this one. I won't. I won't click fast. Uh, the Keith Barker dot com and go. Oh, all right. Maybe I didn't press enter before. Uh, we've got it. We've got fault tolerance. We've got HSRP in this network, and I'm gonna put this power supply back in <laughs> right there, and uh, it'll take a few moments to come up. I'm also going to click on save. I'm gonna say file, save as. And let's call this from demo. And that way I can go back to this if we have other questions about it if, in the after chat. So right after this is uh, premiered, we'll hang out in the Discord server for a few minutes, uh, sometimes longer, and have a voice chat if you'd like to join us. Everybody's welcome. And uh, it's been fun. I'm, I'm glad that came back. <laughs> I did have my concerns because it is a simulator. And I thought, oh, please, we're setting up fault tolerance. Hopefully it'll work great. And... Uh, Fortunately, it did. So thanks for joining me in this troubleshooting lab, which was also an HSRP lab. And the key here is don't start building on a network that's busted or broken. Make sure you have basic functionality first and then start adding to it, documenting as you go and saving as you go. And in a production environment, you'd want to do all these things with something called change control, where you have the changes proposed. They are authorized by the people in charge. You have rollback procedures so that you're not going to cause undue outage by making changes. And Packet Tracer is a great little tool that can help us buzz through all that. So if you got any value out of this video or you enjoyed it or you were glad you spent a few minutes here, hit the thumbs up. Let other people know you liked it. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. We'd love to have you as part of the community, both here and on Discord. If you're studying with a good book or you have another set of videos or a paid course that you're using, please let your friends and other people know what works for you. Because the goal for everybody is to take what we're focused on, learn it, get good at it, get better at it, and then continue growing. So CCNA is not the last stop in anybody's ball game. CCNA is a stepping stone to everything else that you might want to do, including security and cloud services and network automation and everything else. The foundational topics in CCNA are critical. So I'm glad you're studying them or refreshing them. Or if you're back on this channel to help other people, I'm glad about that too. All right, so I'll see you in the next live event, whether it's a video or online or in chats. And I appreciate you watching. See you next time.